All right, Rod Farvard, it's great to have you back on the Single Track Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Finn. Good to see you again. I know that the it's good to see you too. I know that the focal point of this conversation is UTMB, but the last time we chatted, you had just punched your ticket to Western States. Super impressive, gutsy performance at Canyon's 100K. So, uh, for those that are in the know and that are, are curious about Western States, can you give us the diagnosis there and maybe some of the big takeaways and what you're applying to this build for UTMB? Yeah. Well, objectively, Western States didn't um, really go to how I wanted it to go, really. But I think after thinking about it a ton, um, I don't think I'll ever really be satisfied with how I do in a result. So, like, uh, you know, ultimately, even if I got t- top 10 or whatever, I still would have been upset I didn't get, like, 8th or 7th. And that's just kind of how this thing goes. And I've also thought about, like, so many people have asked me what happened, what happened, what happened. And I really, like, question how much of what I'm saying is just fluff for me to, you know, make myself feel better about what happened versus, like, what actually happened. Like, I I don't know. What happened was I ran 22 hours, and (laughs) that's definitely not what I think I'm capable of. But that was as good as I was on the day. Had, like, a lot of stomach issues, and but that's part of it. It's not like, Mm. oh, if this happened, then... I would have been, I would have had a great race or whatever, like managing all those things are what ultra is about. And I think like after kind of realizing that and figuring all that out, I I have like a a way better headspace in the sport and realizing that I'm not attached to one result, even if it is Western States and the biggest thing, like if I plan to race as much as I do plan to race, I need to be okay with, you know, the bad days and just accepting that that was as good as I was on the day. Um, and you know, maybe the next day I can be a hundred times better. So I really like that mindset and I'll preface this next question by saying it may be the case that you've been thinking about UTMB for a while, but it does seem like there are a fair number of elites where if they don't have the exact day they wanted on at Western States, they'll, they'll look for UTMB as an opportunity to either redeem themselves or just pursue a result that they think um, reflects just the work they put in and and where their potential is. And I'm curious what UTMB means to you. Is it, is it a race that truly inspires you and that you've been thinking about for a while, or um, are you trying to recoup uh, or, or kind of cash in on all of this hard work you've been doing? Cause I follow you on Strava, man, and you put in incredible work and I mean, the talent's there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for noticing that. But yeah, UTMB for me, you know, I actually was supposed to do this race or was signed up for the race before Western State. So it was like the primary goal for me. Um, you know, everything goes out the window when <laughs> Western States is uh, is an opportunity for you. But yeah, I the, there's no race really out there that I feel like, you know, takes all my strengths and all my passions and like all the aspects of being in the outdoors, whether that's like, you know, being able to use your gear, being able to like manage the night and the cold and like the sleep deprivation and stuff like that. I, you know, I love that kind of stuff. I just love being outside in the mountains. Um, and that's initially what inspired me in, in signing up for the race. Um, I think I do have an opportunity to, to do well there, but I'm also just trying not to attach a goal to this race. And I don't think I ever was, even when I was, you know, Mm. initially just signed up for UTMB. My, my intention was to go here, experience Chamonix, experience my first world stage race. Also, like I've only raced in the U S I've never raced internationally. So I have a a lot to learn. It'd be really naive for me to say like, yeah, I'm going to go in there and, and, you know, destroy the world, you know? (laughs) So yeah, Mm. I, I want this to be a learning experience and I want myself to enjoy the day. Like I noticed when I put these goals are great. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly goal oriented and um, driven. Like it, it's the entire reason I'm, I'm like signing up for these races, right? Cause I want to see what I could do in them, but I don't right. want that to be the only thing that, that, that drives me there. I want to experience the day. And actually like my friend, <laughs> really close friend actually recently sent me this article um about this concept called the provisional life and um this like swiss psychologist kind of coined this a long time ago but 
it, it basically is the concept that the life that you're living right now, you, you never think that this is like your, the end of, of like your actual life. You're thinking like you're in this place right now be, to get to like the final, the final end point that is your life. So like if I do X, Y, Z, then I'll get to, to M and M is like the yes. actual life. So I, you know, this could be like super applied into racing where it's like, if, if I do X, Y, Z, if I go run UTMB, I'll be happy because I'll like achieve this goal and that'll be my ultimate life. I think what's ultimately going to make me happy is just running UTMB and having a good day out there, like being out there on the trail and understanding that that is my life in the moment. I'm not like trying to go pursue my, my end goal really. It's just being in there in the mountains, enjoying it enjoy moving fast, enjoy like taking in my nutrition, dialing in my strategy, passing people, which will ultimately lead to like a good goal, but you got to stay present and yeah, just, just staying present is my number one goal when I'm out there. Well, I got to say, first of all, we will, we will link to that article in the show notes. I'll have to grab it from you after this recording. That's awesome. And it reminds me, I think one of the reasons why our interview a couple months back really resonated with listeners is because I think you, A, have this growth mindset and you're constantly mining for whether it's philosophy or stuff around the X's and O's of the sport or uh, nutrition science, you know, anything you're, 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 you're mining for it. And then you kind of bring it to the audience here in this just like really easily consumable way. Um, thinking beyond this provisional life article, is there anything else that, uh, that you've come across recently, whether it's podcasts or books that you've been reading to apply to your training for UTMB? Yeah, I, I want to say specifically, um, I think <laughs> After Western States, I just wanted like a really big reset and to not think of a race for a little bit, even though like I, I knew I wanted to like, you know, get into the the UTMB mindset pretty, pretty quickly and everything. But I just, I kind of wanted to disconnect mainly and just more reflect holistically on like why I'm doing this and that kind of thing. Um, I have read and listened to amazing things that, you know, have, have helped me in, in that kind of realm. Um, I just finished this book by... Uh, Anna Lemke, it's called Dopamine Nation, which basically is is like a a whole summary on like why why we're driven to do things in society right now, and like how much of our day to day life is driven by just like trying to get quick dopamine hits, and it, it's more like applicable yeah. in the sense of like vices and and stuff like that, and um, yeah, things with more like negative connotations, obviously, but I, you know, I consider running like an addiction and it definitely releases dopamine every, every time I go out there and take a step. So it was cool to kind of like apply that research and science into it. Um, and, you know, kind of like understand why I'm <laughs> so into this thing. Um, that was a great read. And ultimately what got me to read that is uh, the Hebrew in the Lab podcast. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that but i am i am a Do. die hard huberman dude like I, I listen to that guy all the time learn so much like he's so good at digesting like really complicated neurophysiological pathways and just like allowing just the layman's to understand it and it's just so interesting like i applied a lot of his principles to my western states plan um on like heating and cooling and um yeah trying to like manage heat and the sauna and all that work but everything always in his podcast comes back to the idea of dopamine and like most of his concepts came from Anna Lemke's book. So, um, love that. You guys should absolutely listen to him. And then I just started, uh, Steve Magnus's new book also. Um, it's called do hard things. And that's been really special because yes. I, I like worship this guy in high school, like every single science of running blog he'd put out, I would um, read in our coach, uh, Chuck Woolridge at Camp Linda High School. He applied a lot of the principles from Steve Magnus. So he was just like the speaking. And um, it's cool to, to like kind of listen to this and reframe what like toughness means and actually have like science behind it to back up, um, you know, what what is ultimately like, uh, who who is ultimately a tough athlete? It's not really that person that, you know, pushes through things all the time. It's like, the person that can identify weaknesses, 
um, take them face on, understand adversity, understand themselves, and be confident enough to go and and try to find a solution to that problem. Mm. All right, we have an awesome show notes page for this episode already. This is awesome. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more, couple more questions. So I know that you train in the Mammoth Lakes area. You have a chance from time to time to run with a friend of the podcast, Tim Tollefson. Uh, I just saw on Strava the other day you were running with uh, one of my close friends, Jimmy Elam. Uh, Tim in particular must be, is a wealth of wisdom when it comes to you, Tim. Have you had a chance to talk with anybody, anyone like him in the lead up to this race? And if so, have they imparted any wisdom that the audience might be interested in getting a sense of? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like every time I run with Tim, I just like come back from like, I feel like I just spent like a retreat somewhere and learned just so much information about just like <laughs> being like a good athlete and like a, a good human and like a balanced person. He's just, he's the best. And he's just like, so willing to, to share that knowledge. So really grateful for our friendship and like the fact that he even wants to run with me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, he has, he has so much to say about UTMB. Like, I mean, he's the best American to ever run UTMB. So he's really prescriptive Agreed. too. So, so I, you know, like I'll, I'll take everything he says and I wish I was a better person to apply it all, but just the stuff he does is kind of like, it's, it, it's, it's very impressive, but it's, it's very psycho too. Like he'll be like <laughs> the last three or the last 50 K of UTMB is like doing like three laps of Mammoth Mountain up and up and down. So like, I'll always go do that workout. The best year I ever had at UTMB, I did that workout like once a week, just so I could really like, uh, you know, feel what it's going to feel like at the end of UTMB. And yeah, he's just like really good at doing that and just getting into that rhythm. Um, he's given me a ton of course knowledge and, you know, I try to design my runs kind of around what, what that would be like. I, I'm not the person to go do a million laps of a 2,500 foot climb. Um, but I am a person to like create a, a really cool, like Alpine loop where I'll go see a ton of lakes, maybe like climb some passes and some peaks ultimately have to try to hitchhike home. Cause I'm on the other side of the Sierra, but, <laughs> um, that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's more like how I like to train. And I do kind of have the intention in mind of like studying the UTMB course and understanding the type of terrain, the, um, technicality, the grade, uh, where like climbs come in, in respect to some like descent. So I can like make sure I get that feeling of going back into a climb after descent. So, um, there has been some focus. I wouldn't say it's my most focused training walk, but it's, you know, July and August in Mammoth Lakes in the Eastern Sierra. So I'm going to, I'm going to be out mm -hmm. in the mountains enjoying myself. <laughs> Right on. Well, man, as always, it's such a pleasure to have you on the podcast, to chat, to get a sense of where your mind's at pre-race. And I'll finish by saying, I just appreciate how generous you are with everything you've learned to date and then passing that off to the audience as well. I think this will be a good episode in that regard. So um, we'll make sure to link again to all of your social media in the show notes. Um, you got any sponsor plugs? You got any shoes or, or gear that you're using on race day that's worth mentioning? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, buff is a title sponsor of the race and they've been supporting me a ton lately. So I, I got to give them a huge shout out. They've been doing all the UTMB races and have been doing a great job with it. Um, a lot of opportunities come from them. Um, ultimate direction. God, I love my athlete manager there, Mitch. He's, <laughs> he's the man and so supportive. Yes. Of me. Shout out Mitch. Um, yeah, such a good dude. And, uh, yeah, we'll be using their packs. Um, and then, yeah, as far as apparel and shoes go, I'm trying out some new things, but, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see kind of what that'll materialize into. Awesome. Well, again, man, great yeah. chatting. We are wishing you the best of luck at UTMB and, uh, yeah, we're a little bit less than two or we're two weeks out here. So, uh, rest well, and we'll see you in Chamonix. Thank you, Mitch. Or thank you, Finn. Called you Mitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's not a terrible thing. <laughs> I, appreciate it, I appreciate everything that you do. Like, I'm always so stoked to listen to your podcast and refer people over all the time. You're doing, you're bringing great attention to our sport and just keep it up, man. Also love following you on Strava. 
What are you up to, by the way? What are you, <laughs> what are you racing soon? <laughs> uh, I, well, we were talking about it offline, man. I have my sights set. By the way, I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I have my sights set on UTMB Mexico. I'm going to do some uh, okay. scouting of that race on behalf of the uh, American Ultra Runners of the World. Because I think that the time of the year is interesting. You know, it's late October, basically November. It's a point to point hundred miler. And um, you don't have to leave the North American continent to get a bunch of UTMB stones if that's what you care about. If you, if your goal is to one day get over mm-hmm. to UTMB, so um, for me, it's been that and Speed Goat this this summer. And uh, I'd love awesome. to get over to UTMB one day to formally race it. I'll be out there for like media stuff, you know, this time around. And I think my partner cool. and I will hike the TMB. But uh, so I'll be I'll be living vicariously through you and Jimmy and Tim and everyone else running uh, yeah, this time man. around. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Then. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do a shakeout run yeah. or get coffee or something. But um, yeah, man, I'll see you uh, in a couple days. Cool. Appreciate it.